Once again, we are at new all-time high in the spy. is getting pretty close to my next Fibonacci level at 498.93. Okay, we just cleared on the weekly and the day. We're looking at a daily, but it counts on the weekly. With SPY close above my 1.618 FIB level, that 490.49 level. That's the critical level to watch for this week because as long as above it, my advice, my recommendation, stay bullish. If we chop a little bit or whatever, that could be possible, but I recommend staying bullish above 490.4 overall. And of course, we could switch back to bearish if we get that false breakout setup that you got to be careful with the top calling but if we're going to call tops the scenario we need things in our favor false breakout exhaustion gap you guys heard this all before but what i want to mention is or i want to ask you guys who here is getting fomo anybody feel like they're missing out getting fomo feel like you missing out gotta be careful with that too gotta be careful calling tops bottom and Getting FOMO, feeling like you're missing out. Gotta be careful. Why? Because <laughs> you guys ever heard of blow-off tops? If you guys don't know about blow-off tops, look at uh, look them up. Investopedia explains it very, very well. Much better than I could ever explain it. Definitely look into that. But we gotta be careful, okay? I'm not saying we're gonna get a blow-off top, but what I am saying is be careful if you catching FOMO. Continue to trade with the traps like I always say. Use the price action to guide you. That's what sheeps do. You're not following Uncle Charters. You're following the price action. And as a sheep, we follow the price action by trading with the traps. Okay? And the last people to get trapped were the bears. When we broke down that 484.5 level last Wednesday, recaptured it, and it led to more upside new all-time high. We could go higher. Let's see if it tests that 498.93 level, okay? All right. So, uh, yeah, as far as a blow-off top goes, how does it usually look? It's like definitely a big reversal. High volume. High volume, guys. Watch the volume. You can't be a price action trader and you don't watch the damn volume. You want to see selling with high volume if that's the case because that volume, what that indicates, is not just people trying to short the market and stuff but it's people taking profits okay the volume also represent when people are taking profits so we see high volume spiking and the market is dropping it could be a blow off top you gotta let everything come together you can't just call a top or a bottom just because and then call it swing trading or long-term investing come on man anyways I'm going to try to keep it simple for you guys, okay? I don't want to make a 45 plus minute video telling you guys the same old thing. That's not even matter. I'm try to make it quick. 490.5, stay bullish. Next resistance I got right now is 496, guys. We were lingering around, lingering around there a little bit a Friday. So we clear 496. Very likely we'll go test my FIB level at 498.93. And we might go hit that big number that people have been talking about for quite some time. Y'all know that big number. The big 500. We'll see. But if that's to be possible, it has to stay above 490.5 on any pullback because even in uptrends, pullback happens. So it got to stay above that. If you're going to trade with the trap, I'd say stick with the false breakdown. Okay, somebody asked me, when are we going to switch bearish, uncle? Well, false breakout, some damn follow through because we had a false breakout setup with no follow through. And you guys see this this white trend line all right a lot of times when you see structure like this shout out to eric from spies day trading but when you see structure like this and it destroys the structure that's a good time to get bearish you know what i mean and, and change your sentiment but overall the, the 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 core principle is false breakouts or breakdown of supports you know what i mean even if you look at the structure just the context is a little different you know what i mean from false breakout blow off tops you know, breakdown of structures is different context, but the principle is overall similar where we want to see the breakdown of critical support levels. So that's when I would switch bears. So like I said, below 490.5, we could get some deeper pullback because then that'll be a false breakout setup. But above it, stay bullish. We are in new all-time high territory. Speaking of new all-time high territory, uh, somebody said uh, the top was in on Triple Q. And let me tell you guys. It looked like it was, man. You know, 
it's so many different setups in the market that we can watch you know bearish setups bullish setup like i say my main core setup is the false breakout and the false breakdown because we want to trade with the traps but it was a beautiful like setup we had here it's super unfortunate it, it didn't play out but it, we had this island right here we had this island right here and shout out to my discord member 3501 because he's mentioned it, it looked like the bears got left stranded on the island guys they got left stranded on the island you know you guys know the island boys but yeah, we got, you know, it did show some follow through. We got the island, the gap down. It was a nice move if he was able to catch it. But then Thursday and Friday, it was just not the Bears day. We, you know, false breakdown setup. You know, we don't call bottoms here, but we got the false breakdown setup. We recaptured his FIB level, 419.71, cleared 421.7. And it led to more upside. It gapped up and, let, and cleared more levels. All right. So from here. 426.8 is the critical level because that is a fib level with 425 below that. All right. As long as above, I would stay bullish on triple Q. 429 and 430.5 are next resistant level. And I also have a level at 433.6 based on a macro level, Fibonacci level. All right. So below 426.8, maybe we get a pullback to the downside. 425, 423.8, 421.7, 419.7. Those would be my target level to level. I would be a whole lot more bearish on triple Q if we broke down that 417 level. Previous pivot low. Look, we could make like a double top, maybe get an M pattern. Yeah, I'll definitely be bearish if that happened. But as of right now, I'm telling you, it's better to stay bullish right now. Stick with the trend. Stay bullish above 426.8. Watch out for breakouts of those upper levels that I gave you guys. NVDA is also looking bullish, guys. And I'm hoping nobody catch FOMO. We still got to play this strategically. And, and me saying FOMO stuff is not me saying I'm bearish, guys. Because people interpret information how they want instead of interpreting how it really is. I'm not here to feed anybody's bias. I'm not a yes man. But what I will say is... I have support at 656.8, all right, 1.786 FIB level. If you want to be bearish, you want to favor a pullback, those levels got to fail. That level got to fail. 656.8, I got a level at 655. Don't see it on a daily. It's more on a small time frame. But on a large time frame, 652, 648.9, 645.6, all FIB levels on the daily chart that you guys can reference if you want to short or play false breakdowns up to you. Now, Overall, right, you trust the breakdown, you know, like the initial breakdown. Sometimes the initial breakdown is tricky because there's like buy orders usually waiting at these levels. So the initial test could be tricky because the buy orders get absorbed and they cause like a bounce a little bit or maybe some false breakdown or something like that. Uh, dead cat is what I'm saying. And then when it tests again, that's when they really break down because now the sell order, uh, the buy orders are less and all that happy stuff. I hope that makes sense what I'm saying. So I'm, what I'm saying is like, I trust breakdowns more when it's on the second test or third test, something like that. Um, but overall, false breakout, false breakdown. And 656.8 is a level to watch. So if you break it down, it could be a false breakout that leads to those lower targets that I mentioned. Now, bullish case scenario, the whole thing is freaking bullish. Six, uh, 662.86 is next resistant with 666. Oh, my goodness. That's the weird number. I'm a Christian, man. Ooh. Uh, I don't like that high. Somebody, bulls, destroy that high. We need new all-time highs, damn it. Oh, man. I'm freaking out here. Um, NVDA, we got that? Just just pretend that freaky part at the end didn't happen. Anyway, here's Tesla. Uh, we got to be careful. I know I mentioned that I'm overall bearish on Tesla, and I'm not seeing anything bullish, but um, of course we still need confirmation, but we are seeing some type of life here. We had this low around Wednesday, and then we got this low around Friday, which is showcasing to me that the buying pressure is coming a little higher. Could be signs of life, but I still need confirmation. It's still above that 184.5 level, which is a FIB level. That's a good start. 188, 190, 192.3 in that previous PIB level around 194-ish. Those levels still must fail. And it's looking like it's trying to set up to clear it, but I'm not going to trust it until it happens because I look to react. I'm not trying to predict. 
okay and overall the bear case scenario is still breakdown of 186 and 184 and of course uh 180 i do got support around 182.5 as well show some buying pressure there so break down the support break down support we can get bearish some more uh here is dow jones okay dow jones had a false breakdown setup of this 383 level that's my 1.786 fib level above it stay bullish i have next resistance at 388 if that clears 390 plus in play you want to get bearish i got support at 385 and 383 those levels must fail to put lower targets in play. 380, 377.4, or maybe even lower. Apple, ah, that 200 day still managed to defend. Yeah, we got below it, but intraday we recaptured. It was a beautiful move. Follow through will be to clear 186. Gap fill at 188. Clear that would be nice. 190 around the 50. And of course, my fifth love at 191.2. Okay, both case pretty straightforward. Clear those levels. Now, Bear case, we got to break down that 200 daily moving average. All right, it's around 182.5 right now. I have a fib level at 182. Peep that zone, guys. If that zone fails, we are bearish. That's when I would be bearish in favor lower lows. All right, meta, I told you guys all oh, bullish above 454. And it went a high, it went as high as 485.96. I don't know what to tell you if you didn't trade this. Maybe you didn't want to catch FOMO. Maybe, you know, it's hard. I don't blame you. I personally did not trade this either because it was just crazy. And if I'm going to deal with crazy, I'm going to deal with crazy that I know, which is more like NVDA and Tesla. Meta, I don't have much experience trading this, this stock, but I tell you, it looks good. It looks freaking wonderful. And I might trade it this week. But I don't know. I don't know. It looks crazy. This chart looks crazy. Bottom line is 454 is still cr uh, critical support. Above it is overall bullish uh resistant is at 486 now we got resistant there and 475 475 and 486 are resistant those levels clear you go to the next fib level around 490 or uh, 497 okay and above that's obviously 500 okay as far as being bearish goes let me see if i could find something on the six hour okay we got a little support here at 472 on the six hour let me go lower to the four. Nice little support at 466. All right, so 472, 466. Let me go lower. Matter of fact, yeah, let me go lower. One hour. Oh, we have 466. Okay, we got a little something here around 463. Little something here at 459.6. And then my 454 levels, okay? That's how Uncle look for... um uh support level resistance level okay on the small time frame amd bullish above 172.5 bull buys above 172.5 if it can clear 180.5 that's bullish follow through all right i got resistance at 179 and 180.5 clear those bullish follow through new all-time high incoming supports at 174 and critical one at 172.5 for a lower high to be put in 172.5 must fail if it does look to short 170.5, 165.5, 164, all would be in target. Amazon, look like it's chopping a little bit on the six. Okay, so here's the daily. It closed at 171.8. My FIB level was at 171.45. As long as above that stay bullish, next resistance at 172.5. If that clears, we're heading up 175, 177, 179. Uh, to be bearish below 171.4 and 170, I look to short with 160.2, uh, 165.7, and 164-ish all in play, all right? Netflix is chopping, it's consolidating, and building strength for the next move. Chop range is kind of big, 571.7 down to 555, okay? Above 571.7, we could get a big move to the upside with high targets in play. I have support at 562 uh, and 560 if that levels fail. Those levels fail. 555 could get tested. Below 555, I would favor a deeper pull pullback. Watch the volume. But if 555 fail, could get real bearish and nasty to the downside. Google, uh, hmm, look at that. Still bouncing off this blue trend line that I have here. Managed to stay above 142.3. All right. Follow through 144, 146, and 147.3 must clear. If it does look too long. Back above 142, I don't think the bears are going to, uh, I don't think the bulls are going to get another recapture. So if it, break it breaks it down again, 142.3 and 141, could be bearish. 138 
all the way down to 134.5 this could be in play here's microsoft still trying to put in a bounce trying to put in a a, a higher low for that to be confirmed 412 must clear and put um what was that 415.3 ish yeah 412 clears 415.3 would be in play and the new all-time highs above that all right support is at 410 408 these levels fail 405 and 402.2 would be in play and below 402 i would favor a lower high and we could correct a lot lower here is socks it's bouncing it's filled that little window that i told you guys about hey eh. um yeah above five 598 i mean no 597 is resistant if it does long uh 604.5 610 and uh 616 would be in play okay to be bearish i need to see support fail 594 592 589ish need to fail to put 585 or lower in play possibly down to 580 ish okay and here is uh that was whatnot uncle like to go shop or whatnot my wife's a seller there if you guys want to know more about it let me know but here's a dark pool level 3.1 billion in premium at the 494.37 level we also had 600 mil a little over uh, 682 million 494.35 you guys want to add that to the mix and then 3.4 billion at 489.15 those are the dark pool levels please add them to your charts okay and here is the spy filter 100k premiums or above holy smokes it's bullish Triple Q disagrees. Triple Q is bearish. Okay, that makes things complicated. Dow Jones, you gotta be kidding me. I IWM got something. IWM is bear. IWM siding with Triple Q right now. Who do you guys side with? NVDA bullish. Tesla bearish. The market is mixed today, even on the flows. Apple's bearish. Don't tell me Meta is bullish. Meta is bullish. Holy smokes. Even the flows are mixed. Amazon's bullish. AMD is bullish. Watch Netflix be bearish. Don't tell me. This thing crashed. I'm so sorry, guys. Fuck it. I'm. Ah! Channel flow crashed on me. All right. But that's all I got. That's the weekend video, guys. You guys got my levels. You guys got my setups. Good luck this week. Trade unbiasedly and do it by trading with the traps. Don't be a victim to it no more. No more. All right? Don't be a victim to it no more. We use it to our advantage. Peace.